morning. It is your boy, Jake Goble, back at it again for Not Many Noble, reading the Bible through in 22 with you. It is November 8th, and that means we've been reading the Bible 312 days together, 53 days left. It's National Steam Day, STEM Day, STEM Steam, STEM Steam Day, National Cappuccino Day, and World Radio Radiography, 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 Radiography. Shot day. I wonder what kind of shot they mean. Do they mean an espresso shot day or just in general, whatever it is that you're drinking, drop a shot of it today. Go get you some. Maybe. I don't know. We're in Acts chapter one. Now, apparently I did make a little mistake because remember we abandoned the chronological reading order for the Bible this year. We're reading it in chronological order from beginning to end out of the World English Bible Translation. And we finished Luke yesterday. So then today I was just going to pick up into Acts, but I guess I should have read a little bit of Acts yesterday. So now we've got a lot of reading to do today. But I don't think it's going to be too terrible. I don't think it's going to be too terrible, but it's Acts 1 through 5. I know. But I think I think we got this. I think we got this. The first book I wrote, Theophilus, concerned all that Jesus began both to do and to teach, which is what we just got done reading. Until the day in which he was received up, after he had given commandment through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. To these he also showed himself alive after he suffered by many proofs, appearing to them over a period of forty days and speaking about God's kingdom. Being assembled together with them, he commanded them, Don't depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father which you heard from me. For John indeed baptized in water, but you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when he had come together, um, when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, are you now restoring the kingdom to Israel? Still don't get it. <clears throat> the Lord Jesus Christ had just, has just risen from the dead and has been teaching them. <laughs> and then they're like, so we're kicking the Romans out now or what's up? He said to them, it isn't for you to know times or seasons which the father has set within his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You will be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. A little bit different than what they were expecting. Still, when he had said these things as they were looking, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. While they were looking steadfastly into the sky as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white clothing, who also said, You men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This Jesus who was received up from you into the sky will come back in the same way as you saw him going into the sky. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mountain called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had come in, they went up into the upper room where they were staying. That is Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon, the zealot, and Judas, the son of James. All these with one accord continued steadfastly in prayer and supplication along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. In these days, Peter stood up in the middle of the disciples, and the number of names was about 120, and said, Brothers, it was necessary that this scripture should be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke before by the mouth of David concerning Judas, who was guide to those who took Jesus. For he was counted with us and received his portion in this ministry. Now this man obtained a field with the reward for his wickedness and falling headlong, he burst open and all his intestines gushed out. It became known to everyone who lived in Jerusalem that in their language, the field was called Akeldama, that is the field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be made desolate, let no one dwell in it. Psalm sixty-nine twenty-five, and let another take his office. Psalm 109, 8. Of the men, therefore, who have accompanied us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John to the day that he was received up from us, of these one must become a witness with us of his resurrection. They put forward too Joseph, called Barsabbas, who was also called Justice, and Matthias. They prayed and said, You, Lord, who know the hearts of all men, show which one of these two you have chosen, to take part in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas fell away, that he might go to into his own place. They drew lots for them, and the lot fell on Matthias, and he was counted with the eleven apostles. 
Now when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all with one accord in one place. Suddenly there came from the sky a sound like the rushing of a mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Tongues like fire appeared and were distributed to them, and one sat on each of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other languages as the Spirit gave them ability to speak. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under the sky. When this sound was heard, the multitude came together and were bewildered, because everyone heard them speaking in his own language. They were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Behold, aren't all these who speak Galileans? How do we hear everyone in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and people from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, the parts of Libya around Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them speaking in our languages, the mighty works of God. They were all amazed and were perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? Others, mocking, said they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and spoke out to them. You men of Judea and all you who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to my words. For these aren't drunken, as you suppose, seeing it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what has been spoken through the prophet Joel. It will be in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Yes, and on my servants and on my handmaidens in those days, I will pour out my spirit and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth beneath, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and glorious day of the Lord comes. It will be that whoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Joel 2, 28 through 32. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved by God to you by mighty works and wonders and signs which God did by him among you, even as you yourselves know, him being delivered up by the determined counsel and foreknowledge of God, you have taken by the hand of lawless men, crucified and killed, whom God raised up, having freed him from the agony of death, because it was not possible that he should be held by it. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh also will dwell in hope, because you will not leave my soul in Hades. Neither will you allow your Holy One to see decay. You made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Psalm 16. 8 through 11. Brothers, I may tell you freely of the patriarch David that he both died and was buried and his tomb is with us to this day. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that the fruit of his body, according to the flesh, he would raise up the Christ to sit on his throne. He, foreseeing this, spoke about the resurrection of the Christ, that his soul wasn't left in Hades and his flesh didn't see decay. This Jesus God also, God raised up to which we are all witnesses. Being therefore exalted by the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this, which you now see and hear. For David didn't ascend into the heavens, but he says himself, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit by my right hand until I make your enemies for your foot, a footstool for your feet. There we go. I think I need another cup of coffee here. That's what I need to get going. Psalm 110, verse 1. Let all the house of Israel therefore know certainly that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all who and to all who are far off even as many as the lord our god will call to himself with many other words he testified and exhorted them saying save yourselves from this crooked generation then those who gladly received his word were baptized there were added that day about three thousand souls they continued steadfastly in the apostles teaching and fellowship in the breaking of bread and prayer Fear came on every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They sold their possessions and goods and distributed them to all, according to, to according as anyone had need. Day by day, continuing steadfastly with one accord in the temple and breaking bread at home, they took their food with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. The Lord added to the assembly day by day, those who were being saved and two chapters in and i'm like we should not read five today let's just read four let me just check this the thing for tomorrow yeah let's just do 
let's do that. Let's do four today and four tomorrow. I think that's a that's a that's a good way to go. That's what we'll do. We'll do one, two, three, and four. So we'll do two more. We'll do three and four, and then we'll do four, five, six, seven. Four, five, six, seven. To five, six, seven. Wait a minute. Six and seven. Something like that. We'll do. What are we doing? We'll do one more. Sorry. We'll do one more. We'll do Acts 1, 2, and 3. And then tomorrow, 4, 5, 6, and 7. That doesn't make any sense either. How about just keep reading and we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Peter and John were going up into the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. A certain man who was lame from his mother's womb was being carried, whom they laid daily at the door of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask gifts for the needy of those who entered into the temple. Seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked to receive gifts for the needy. Peter, fastening his eyes on him with John, said, Look at us. He listened to them, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I have no silver or gold, but what I have, that I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. He took him by the right hand and raised him up. Immediately his feet and his ankle bones received strength. Leaping up, he stood and began to walk. He entered with them into the temple, walking, leaping, and praising God. All the people saw him walking and praising God. They recognized him, that it was he who used to sit begging for gifts for the needy at the beautiful gate of the temple. They were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. As the lame man who was healed held on to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. When Peter saw it, he responded to the people, You men of Israel, why do you marvel at this man? Why do you fasten your eyes on us as though by our own power or godliness we made him walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had determined to release him. But you denied the holy and righteous one and asked for a murderer to be granted to you and killed the prince of life whom God raised from the dead, to which we are witnesses. By faith in his name, his name has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which is through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Now, brothers, I know that you did this in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But the things which God announced by the mouth of all his prophets, that Christ should suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn again, that your sins may be blotted out, so that there may come times of refreshing from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send Christ Jesus, who was ordained for you before, whom heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things, which God spoke long ago by the mouth of his holy prophets. For Moses indeed said to the fathers, The Lord God will raise up a prophet for you from among your brothers like me. You shall listen to him in all things, whatever he says to you. It will be that every soul that will not listen to that prophet will be utterly destroyed from among the people. Deuteronomy 18, 15 and uh, verses 18 through 19. Yes, and all the prophets from Samuel and those who followed after as many as have spoken, they also told of these days. You are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our father, saying to Abraham, all the families of the earth will be blessed through your offspring. Genesis twenty two eighteen and 26, 4. God, having raised up his servant Jesus, sent him to you first to bless you and turning away every one of you from your wickedness. All right, we'll do chapter four as well. We will do chapter four as well. As they spoke to the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came to them, being upset that they taught the people and proclaimed in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. They laid hands on them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was now evening. But many of those who heard the word believed, and the number of the men came to be about 5,000. In the morning, their rulers, elders, and scribes were gathered together in Jerusalem. Annas, the high priest, was there, with Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and as many as were relatives of the high priest. When they had stood Peter and John in the middle of them, they inquired, By what power or in what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, You rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we are examined today concerning a good deed done to a crippled man, by what means this man has been healed, may it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel, that in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, this man stands here before you, whole in him. He is the stone which was regarded as worthless by you, the builders, which has become the head of the corner. Psalm 118.12 There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven that is given among men by which we must be saved. 
Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled. They recognized that they had been with Jesus. Seeing the man who was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go outside of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? Because indeed a notable miracle has been done through them, as can be plainly seen by all who dwell in Jerusalem, and we can't deny it. But so that this spreads no further among them, let's threaten them, (laughs) that from now on they don't speak to anyone in his name. That'll work. They called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered them, Whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you, Rather than to God, judge for yourselves, for we can't help telling the things which we saw and heard. When they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding no way to punish them because of the people, for everyone glorified God for that which was done. For the man on whom this miracle of healing was performed was more than forty years old. Being let go, they came to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they had heard it, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, O Lord, you are God, who made the heaven, the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who by the mouth of your servant David said, Why do the nations rage and the people's plot a vain thing? The kings of the earth take a stand and the rulers together, or take counsel together against the Lord and against his Christ. Psalm 2, 1 and 2. For truly, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, to do whatever your hand and your counsel foreordained to happen. Now, Lord, look at their threats and grant to your servants to speak your word with all boldness, while you stretch out your hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. When they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were gathered together. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. The multitude of those who believed were of one heart and soul. Not one of them claimed that anything of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. Great grace was on them all, for neither was there among them any who lacked, for as many as were owners of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of the things that were sold and laid them at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made to each according to as anyone had need. Joseph, who by the apostles was also named Barnabas, which is being interpreted son of encouragement, a Levite, a man of Cyprus by race, having a field, sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. If you've already read it, you know what happens next, but we are going to find that out tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat channel. All right, I know we're going a little long. Let's pray. Father, Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that you have seen fit to preserve it for us. We wish very much to be like you. We wish very much to be like this. Uh, We wish very much to have this type of love and sacrifice. We confess we don't know exactly what it would look like, what uh, it would take to have all things in common, to share all things, to bear one another's burdens up like they did here. But we know that we want to believe, we want to be of one heart and one soul with our fellow believers. Help us in Christ's name. Amen. All right, y'all. Show notes, notmanynoble.com. Also email, notmanynoble at gmail.com. Thanks for hanging in there with me. And uh, thanks for listening. I'll catch you tomorrow. Peace.